And they're rolling in. For those of you joining us, we're going to start promptly at 8 o'clock. So if you guys need to get a drink of water or anything, you're more than welcome to. And uh, we will talk to you guys here in about four minutes. All right, and thank you too for joining us. Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All West Virginia Students, sponsored by the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers and StraxCAM. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at WVA, WVACR, sorry, WVACRAO.org. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same, <clears throat> at the same website, WestVirginiaAcro.org. Now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm just gonna quickly share my screen. I'm so glad all of you were able to join us today. 
Um, my name is Emily Gruby, and I'm one of the global recruitment officers for Duke Quinchon University, um, which is a joint venture institution that Duke University here in North Carolina in the US um, opened over in China. Um, and as our hosts introduced, um, I do hope that you'll use the Q&A function throughout the presentation if you have any questions. Um, I may wait till the end um, if I'm unable to get to questions as they come in, but please, please, please use that. So as I mentioned, um, we are a joint venture institution in China. Um, Duke opened up DKU, Duke Quinchon University, to really create a um, truly global university. It is a research-oriented institution that does focus on liberal arts and sciences, um, but we've taken a very innovative, practical, and of course, global approach to higher education. There are a few buzzwords that you'll see throughout our website and throughout this presentation, for sure, um, but I think that they really sum up the nature of Duke Quinchon, and that is interdisciplinary and experiential. And we've really um, had those in mind when we were designing our curriculum. So I've already mentioned that this is a partnership with Duke University. Um, like I said, the, the official um, category that we're in in China is called a joint venture institution. So it is between Duke University here in the US and Wuhan University in China. Um, and it is in Quinchang, in Quinchang, China, in Jiangsu province. And I'll show you a little bit about where that is and tell you more about the city in just a moment. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with Duke University, um, you know, it is located in the Research Triangle in um, North Carolina. It is one of the top ranked universities in the world and consistently a top 10 US college. Um, you will spend the majority of your time in Quinchang, China. Um, however, you do have the opportunity to also spend a semester and potential summer term um, on Duke's campus here in Durham. When you graduate, you earn degrees from both Duke Quinchon University, which is accredited by the Ministry of Education in China, and you earn a bachelor's degree from Duke University, which is accredited here in the US. Um, and along with that, you would, you would be able to join both alumni networks, which has over 170,000 members, um, and you'd get the resources associated with being in those alumni networks. So Quinchon, what is the city of Quinchon like? Um, as you can see here on the map, it is right in between Suzhou and Shanghai. Um, Quinchang is considered to be a small city by Chinese standards, and I use air quotes because it's still about 2 million people. Um, so for those of us from the U.S. and from um, more rural areas, especially in the U.S., 2 million people is still a pretty big city. Um, and it's within um, a 20-minute train ride from Shanghai, which is one of the biggest cities in the world, and Suzhou, which is about the population of New York City. So there's a lot going on in this area. Um, it is, you know, a, a city, like I mentioned, but it's also surrounded by pic picturesque forests and historic water towns. So you get a really unique juxtaposition between traditional China um, and the hustle and bustle of city life in China. So this picture I really love of Quinchang because I think it kind of sums up our um, our just persona really well because as you can see there are um, skyscrapers in the back and and it is a, a pretty rapidly growing city so um, if you look very closely you can see the um, construction cranes going on in the background which again I just think that kind of um, represents us well um, but it also has a lot of green space which is um, you know not super common for for a big city like this but I, I think that is what makes us pretty unique is that um, you do have that um, green area still, and, and that, that is something that's prioritized in Quinchan. I mentioned that there are some of these like historic water towns nearby, and so this is an example of one, and it is, um, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. There's quite a few um, in really close distance from campus in Suzhou, um, but I, again, I just think it's like a really unique opportunity to see, um, you know, a very traditional side of China, but also have the resources um, and the connections of, um, of a big city. And then, of course, I already mentioned Shanghai is about um, a 19 minute train ride from Quinchan and our students definitely take advantage of that close proximity um, for nightlife, for going out to eat, all sorts of fun um, reasons to go into Shanghai. You'll also probably go into the city at some point with um, your professors on field trips. So why China? Why did Duke decide to open up a school over there? Well, they felt that to solve these big global issues of economics, um, environmental issues, issues with global health, that students needed a truly international education because they are international issues. 
Um, and so they, you know, really wanted to create an institution that um, was geared towards students who really understand the, the value of um, learning from faculty and from other students from all around the world and um, understand and value the um, differences in cultures. So we are founded on this concept of rooted globalism, which essentially means that we're not just sending students to China to learn the Chinese way or even learn the Duke way. It's really about bringing our perspectives from um, our own countries, from our own upbringings um, to these discussion-based courses and really, again, learning from each other because our students are very diverse um, as well as our faculty. So through this, we hope to cultivate truly engaged global citizens and really just understand other cultures a bit more. Um, and I know I've, you know, I've, I've mentioned our kind of focus on the connection between the US and China, but I do wanna assure you that we're preparing students for international careers and graduate programs all around the world, not just in those two countries. So here are the, some of those buzzwords I mentioned again. So um, this kind of describes our curriculum a bit, but innovative, interdisciplinary, and integrated. Um, and so in creating this, you know, this joint venture institution all the way in China, Duke really wanted to reinvent the, tradi the traditional notion of liberal arts and sciences education. And you'll be able to see this play out in, in a few slides when I'm talking about our majors, because they're all blended disciplines. Um, it is a Duke education in China, so it is a pretty um, rigorous academic setting. Um, and so we are looking for students who are going to be able to succeed in that environment. Again, I've mentioned this, but we do have um, the majority of our classes are discussion based, which is um, is pretty unique in China. It's it's you, you don't see too many of those courses, but I think that's kind of where the the US connection comes through is that we we do really put a value on discussion based courses as well as the experiential side of things. So you will have um, field trips with your with your professors, with your classes. Um, there will be a lot of emphasis on getting off campus as well, because we don't want you to go all the way to China um, just to stay within the walls of the classroom. Okay, so our faculty um, are very diverse. They come from all over the world. Um, about a third of them are on rotation from Duke University in the US. That's actually how you're able to earn the two degrees, the, the Duke degree and the Duke Quinchon degree. Um, and that is through taking a certain number of classes taught by Duke faculty. So I did mention that you um, will have the opportunity to study for a semester and a summer term at Duke here in Durham, North Carolina. Um, however, you're also able to um, take those courses in Quinchon because again, about a third of our faculty are on rotation from Duke. As far as the um, other two thirds go and the, the permanent faculty on campus, they, they come from all over the world. So they're coming from the US, from China, um, and from many other countries as well. One thing that makes our faculty truly exceptional is that there is a strong focus on mentorship. So you will definitely um, see your professors outside of the classroom. They may, um, you know, have uh, research projects that they they work with students on they may be supervising student organizations um, they may even be living on campus so you definitely will see them quite a bit um, and all faculty they speak fluent english and all classes are taught in english too so that's something that we we definitely like to remind students because you don't actually have to know any chinese to be accepted into Duke Quinchon. Um, all international students, so all students from outside of China, are required to take Chinese once you enroll, but you do not have to know any prior to, um, to, to starting at DKU. Um, like I said, all international students will be required to take it for two years once you start, but the majority of our international students actually come in with, with no previous Chinese experience, so they start off at that basic one-on-one level. You can see here that our student faculty ratio is seven to one, which is, is pretty impressive and, and very small. So again, that's kind of how you can see the, the mentorship focus there. Um, and so far about 20% of our current undergraduates have participated in research with a professor already. And as a pretty new institution, we, we just opened in 2013, um, but we just started bringing in undergrads a few years ago. So we, we currently have freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. So 20% of them already have, have done research. I think, I think that's pretty impressive and pretty exceptional. So again, you know, I mentioned experiential a few times so far, and I think that we've really kind of um, supported that and embodied that through our unique course schedule. So we do have a four plus one academic week, which means that we only have classes Monday through Thursday, 
So Fridays are meant for co-curricular education. That could be field trips with a faculty member. That could be um, going into Shanghai and career tracks with our career center. Um, that could be doing volunteer work, um, catching up on, on schoolwork, all sorts of things. You may have Fridays off every now and then too. Um, so our students, I think, definitely um, enjoy the Monday through Thursday schedule. Additionally, we have a pretty innovative semester schedule too. So um, we do kind of follow like a, what I call like a hybrid academic calendar between um, a traditional Chinese university calendar and um, one that you'd see in the US. So the way that it kind of mirrors the US calendar is that we do have um, two semesters. So fall and spring semester separated by a winter break um, that would run over the Christmas holidays. Um, we, you know, we start around the same time as Duke, so August um, to December, then with a, a small break between December and January, and then concluding the semester in May. Um, in addition to winter break, you also get Chinese holidays, so there's typically a week-long break in the fall, um, as well as um, some little holidays here and, here and there, um, and then you also have Chinese New Year off, too. And then additionally, um, our semester is split into two seven-week sessions, so um, you're only taking two to three courses at a time instead of the typical four to five courses that you take at a, um, at a you know, a, a typical U.S. institution. Um, so it is a little intense because you are essentially taking a semester's worth of courses kind of crammed into to seven weeks, um, but you're balancing less courses overall. Um, so I, I think that there are many benefits to that, um, that kind of setup that we have going on. Okay, and so we also have a very engaging academic environment. Um, I already mentioned the seven to one student faculty ratio, um, but we also have a very small student body in general. Um, like I said, we only have our, our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors there so far. It's a, a little over 800 undergraduates, um, in addition to um, a couple hundred graduate students. Um, again, we do have discussion-based classrooms and we have complete academic freedom. If you are familiar with Chinese education system or in specifically Chinese higher education system, you may be thinking that there, there is some um, censorship in the classroom. However, one of the stipulations of Duke opening up a university in China was that our faculty and our students had to have complete academic freedom. So we truly can talk about what we want in the classroom and do research on the projects that we want as well. And along with that, we do have free and open internet. So um, typically in China, there are, um, there's a, a firewall that, is, that blocks um, Google, Facebook, um, all those important websites. Um, however, we have special privileges as a joint venture institution that um, allows us to have our Wi-Fi routed from um, another country. So we have an internet proxy on campus. And then off campus, you, you will have like VPNs on your computers and phones and, any, and all your devices, you can turn on and have access to all of those websites off campus as well. Um, and, you know, I joke about Facebook and Netflix and, and all those things, but, um, you know, more importantly, you do have access to all of Duke's digital library resources as well. So that's a, that's a um, huge benefit um, and something that is, is not common in China to be able to have um, that much access. And we feel that all of these things really does um, promote a truly collaborative and engaging um, academic environment. So I've mentioned um, the fact that we're interdisciplinary quite a few times throughout this presentation, but I do want to kind of um, sh tell you about our three distinct academic divisions. So we do have natural sciences, social sciences, and arts and humanities. Um, no matter what you choose to major in, you will take classes in all of these areas. Some of our classes are even team taught by professors um, in different departments. Um, additionally, some of our majors are actually housed in multiple departments, too, because they're inter interdisciplinary in nature um, on their own. So here is a, um, a quick glance into our academic majors. So you'll see here that we do have um, uh, majors that are underlined in these examples, um, and then there are hollow bullet points underneath the majors that are our disciplinary tracks. So um, you will choose a major, but you'll also get a chance to choose a disciplinary track within that major. You do not have to know what you're gonna major in when you apply. Um, we actually don't even allow our students to officially declare their majors until the end of their sophomore years, because we do want students to be able to take um, some exploratory courses and really figure out um, what the best route is for them. 
that being said, we certainly have students who already know um, what they're interested in. And so they're able to start taking major um, coursework earlier on in their um, college career um, prior to officially declaring a major. Okay, so as far as um, other like services and support goes on campus, we have some, some pretty stellar offices and, and departments that, that really help make um, the college experience as successful as possible. And I'll briefly go into each of these in the next slides. Um, the first one is still kind of in the, the academic vein and that is our undergraduate advising. Um, and so undergraduate advising is, you know, exactly what you, you probably think it is as far as making sure that you're there advising you to take the right classes so you graduate on time and in the major that you're hoping to complete. Um, they'll also make sure that you're taking enough courses to earn both of those Duke and Duke Quinchon degrees. Um, but they, they also oversee a lot more than just that. So they oversee all of our tutoring services, academic mentoring services, signature project advising, which signature project is essentially like your um, capstone. It's a, it's a project that is pretty open-ended that, that you'll work on um, as an upperclassman. Um, they also have um, advisors that are specifically skilled in advising for pre-health, so pre-med, um, pre-law, and any other kind of like graduate programs or professional school guidance. Um, and so they're just, they're just really a, a great, a, a true wealth of resources when it comes to um, student success. Okay, and another one that I briefly have touched on is our career services department. Um, and so they do, you know, again, typical career counseling um, and job search training, but they also provide a lot of resources for you um, in, in terms of corporate and networking events. They host big internship um, fairs each semester. They bring students um, on Fridays into Shanghai and Suzhou to visit big international companies. So students get um, not only networking opportunities that way, but they also get exposure to um, how business is done in Shanghai, how, bus how international business is conducted, um, because many of the, com the companies um, that they um, visit have presences beyond just, um, just China too. So they're, they're big international um, corporations. We also do have an athletics department. So I will say we do not have a, you know, a division one um, national basketball championship team yet, but we do have um, quite a few opportunities to stay fit on campus, to get involved with sports. Um, we have physical education courses um, that are not required, but you know, you can join in on those. We have many club sports. You can see a few here. Basketball is actually pretty big in China. So we have a couple of um, club sports for that. Um, soccer is big or football, um, it's especially big among the um, international students, um, but we have quite a few other um, club sports too. We also have a great fitness center on campus um, that has personal training, fitness consultations, you know, like workout rooms, um, um, space that you can, you know, um, dance and, and do all sorts of things. You can actually reserve um, facilities as well. And part of our um, phase two campus, which is going to be completed, um, I'm sorry, phase two construction of campus is going to be completed in, in early 2022. So we'll have a brand new sports center opening up um, then with, you know, a, a huge, um, a huge expansion to our fitness center and also, you know, like the um, rock climbing wall and all those important things that you see on um, many college campuses. And I will say our um, athletics director too is, is very impressive and very knowledgeable. I um, mean, he really works with students who, um, who, you know, want to continue a particular sport in college that maybe they, they're not, um, we don't have a club sport team for, or, you know, they're, they're having trouble finding um, facilities or resources for that. Um, he's worked with many students to make sure that they find the proper connections. Okay, and another really important service that we have is Counseling and Psychological Services, or CAPS. Um, and they are, are really, um, truly a, a great organization and, and they have a lot of um, involvement with our international students because not only are um, our international students going to college for the first time, um, they're also doing so um, far away from home. So they provide a lot of um, individual counseling services as well as workshops and support groups. Um, and they've really stepped it up during um, the pandemic as well to offer um, quite a few virtual services during COVID-19. Um, and as you can see in the picture, they've also had some puppy therapy before. 
Um, it's definitely not something that they've, they've been able to, to uh, replicate virtually, but um, it's um, definitely something that's encouraged around um, this, you know, most stressful times of year, um, which in college, of course, is, is during those, uh, those midterm and final exams. And then we also, as a residential campus, have a lot of support when it comes to residence life. So um, basically our residence life department oversees all the like community-based aspects of living on campus. Um, they really, um, you know, host very intentional interactions when it comes around, uh, around those like, you know, certain times of year that are a little bit more stressful. They'll have um, great programming. They will do um, all the roommate matching and um, make sure that you get the accommodations that you need if you need any. Um, and they provide a lot of really cool leadership opportunities as well. Um, and beyond all of those student services, we have over 40 clubs and organizations, and this number grows every year as well. Um, our student organizations um, range from Model UN to the club sports that I mentioned, to our LGBT group, to um, music groups, to like a robotics club. I mean, there's all sorts of things. And the really cool thing is if you can't find the club that meets your needs, there's a lot of support to start it yourself as well. Okay, so a little bit about campus. You know, I did mention that we opened in 2013, so it is a, a new campus. So, you know, it was built from the ground up as well. So um, everything is pretty pretty new and sleek. And you can see in the, um, the top right photo, that is one of our double dorms in um, the student residence hall. So um, very nice. Um, you actually will share uh, the, com the common space, which is the bottom left photo. You'll actually share that area with another set of roommates. Um, so it is kind of like in, you know, in my mind, it's kind of like looks like a townhome um, feature because you do either enter in um, uh, at the, you know, in the common area and either go upstairs to, to your dorms or um, go downstairs. So you have a pretty spacious area there. Plus, very close to campus, you have that fitness center that I mentioned. You have dining halls and cafes, as well as student cooking facilities, which is um, a pretty new thing that our, our first group of um, students or inaugural freshman class actually advocated for, because um, we didn't have a lot of student cooking facilities, and so they actually built that for them af at their request. Um, we also have um, a, a campus physician, um, so we have a lot of, you know, just resources when it comes to health and wellness um, and we've really tried to create a, a truly safe healthy and inclusive environment um, we do have like i mentioned dining halls and cafes right on campus um, the picture in the top left is our dining hall which serves both asian style food and western style food um, and there's a few other restaurants and, and cafes on campus there are restaurants in walking distance from campus as well um, and I think one of the, the favorites of our students is um, food delivery. So similar to, you know, Uber Eats or Grubhub here, that's, that's also big in China. So our students definitely take advantage of that um, to order food to campus. And as far as the other facilities go, I mean, we do have some really impressive um, academic facilities. So we are the only LEED certified campus in China. And so if you're unfamiliar with LEED certification, it's basically um, uh, certified that you are have certain levels of like sustainability and like green, um, you know, green intentions, I guess. Um, so, you know, we all of our buildings do have um, different levels of LEED certification. Um, we have some really amazing um, teaching research and artificial intelligence labs in our brand new innovation building. Um, we have some really unique classroom space. So you've, you may have seen um, a few setups throughout the presentation in the background of the photos, but the bottom left photo is um, an example of one of our classroom spaces. But um, the classrooms are really set up depending on what the professor needs for the particular course. So all the classrooms look very different from one another. Um, there are also tons of independent and group study spaces, as well as a student center um, that has just a lot of cool spaces to not just study, but to also host events with your student organizations or um, other things that you're getting involved in. So there's just some, some really great spaces on campus. So why choose DKU? So I'm going to let you guys read these quotes, but I'll tell you a little bit about these two students. And these are two of our international students. 
So Peter at the top, he's actually from here in the um, Research Triangle area of North Carolina, so where I am and where Duke is. Um, and he actually, um, in high school, did a lot of research with um, Duke professors, so he really wanted to continue to have that connection with faculty and in his college experience. Um, so that's definitely something that he was looking for. Um, Reika at the bottom is from Japan, but she actually lived in quite a few different countries, so she already had this very um, unique international experience in her in her um, educational upbringing, and so I think she was also looking to kind of continue that in college as well. And um, DKU is certainly a place to, to do that. So our students, again, are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, what we currently have um, who make up our undergrad students. They come from over 50 countries um, and are, are represent six continents, so um, they are a very diverse group of students. Um, and the, even the students that come from the U.S. are very diverse as well. They're coming from all over the country. About 15% of our student body comes from the U.S. Um, we do have to have at least half of our students come from China. That's part of being a joint venture institution. So we have to have at least 51% be Chinese from China. And so they will always make up the majority um, group, but we don't have any kind of quotas or anything for the rest of our student body. So it is a very diverse group of students. So who are our students? So, you know, who makes up our student body, but also what are we looking for um, in our next cl class of freshmen? Um, so we are looking for students who um, are, you know, high achievers. Again, I mentioned that this is a, a Duke education in China. So we are looking for students, again, that can succeed in that academic environment that is a bit rigorous. Um, we're looking for students that are accomplished and curious and, and open-minded because, you know, they are going to, to China, to a brand new country with students, again, from all over the world. Um, so we want students who are going to be um, interested in China and, and interested in an international education in general. Um, our students certainly are adventurous. They do um, take advantage of the location to travel all around Asia, to travel around China. Um, there are many um, affordable ways to travel around Asia too, and so our students definitely um, take advantage of that. Um, our students are, again, very open-minded and independent thinkers, but also just very engaged. And these are the kind of things that we're also looking for when we are reading your Common App essays too, to kind of see how um, you will be a good fit for, um, for Duke Quinchan. So this is a little, um, a little bit more on that adventure side, but you know, we've kind of, um, you know, call ourselves the gateway to Asia because it is really easy to access many other major cities all over Asia. So you'll see here, these are the flight times from Shanghai, um, which is essentially like our, our major airport. Um, and I, I do want to say that it's, it is also very affordable to um, travel to, to travel by air around Asia because there are a lot of um, Asian budget airlines. But there's also a really, um, really phenomenal train system all throughout China that, that you can get all over China um, very affordably as well. And, you know, I did mention that you do have um, a couple week long breaks throughout the year. So you have one in the fall and one in the spring, as well as some um, extended weekends for um, smaller Chinese holidays. So um, there, there's plenty of opportunities to, um, to see the world. Okay, so how do you decide whether or not to come to Duke Quinchan if you are accepted? Well, we do have an international admitted student experience. So um, in the past, we've been able to bring students who are admitted to Duke Quinchan to campus. So we, we um, have covered the costs for students, again, who are admitted um, to be able to come to campus for a, a weekend, um, kind of a whirlwind weekend, to um, see campus, you know, do an official campus tour, um, to connect with professors and future classmates, to sit in on sample classes, to talk to organization, student organization leaders, meet with the athletics director, all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, last April, this event was canceled and, and then, you know, it was turned into a virtual event, which, you know, of course we were disappointed in, but we um, still were able to um, uh, offer students the, the same types of connections that they would have made on campus. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you guys are used to hearing this, but I have no idea what this April is going to look like as far as the pandemic goes and as far as 
um, you know, uh, travel goes around the world. So um, do keep that in mind. I don't want to over promise anything. But um, in the past, again, we have ho hosted an international admitted student experience. And even if we're unable to bring students to Quinchan um, this April, we will um, offer many opportunities for you to um, have all the information necessary to make your decision. Um, so this is a quick glance into our estimated tuition and fees. So you'll see here that we do charge Duke tuition, which is a, a pretty scary number, but all of our students are automatically considered for merit-based aid. And um, they just need to submit their CSS profile if they also wanna be considered for any based aid. So we do award up to full tuition. Um, the estimated total cost of attendance is significantly lower than, than Duke's, um, even though we do charge the same tuition. And that's just because the cost of living in China is a lot less than North Carolina. Um, so housing, food, those kind of things are significantly lower. And, you know, the, I, I've um, talked with students who have spent um, a lot less on estimated living expenses. So I encourage everyone to um, create their own budget when they're really thinking about their um, college expenses. But like I men mentioned, you will automatically be considered for merit-based scholarships and you can also be considered for need-based aid um, if you just submit that CSS profile. The vast majority of our incoming students, international students receive um, substantial aid. And I say substantial because we don't award any um, like $500 scholarships that really aren't gonna do much when tuition is as high as, as it is at Duke. Um, and so I do want to assure you that, that we do award a lot of aid and we're very generous in, in that, um, that area. Um, and it is free to apply. We are on the Common App. There's no application fee. So it's essentially free to find out if you'd um, get a scholarship as well if you're admitted. So if you are admitted, you'll receive your financial aid award letter with your admissions um, letter. So I encourage you to apply if you're at all interested. So again, we are on the Common App. Um, we do require, you know, the typical things that the Common App asks for, the school report, transcripts, um, counselor evaluation, and a couple teacher recommendations, as well as a few essays and just general information on the Common App. Um, we typically um, do require the SAT, ACT, or equivalent. However, if you're a current senior and you're, you're applying for fall 2021 admission, we have made that test optional. We know that it's been challenging throughout the pandemic to um, find testing sites and, and you know, everything's just kind of thrown off. So we wanted to make it as easily as possible for you. Um, if you are a current high school junior or below, then just check in with us next year and, and keep an eye on our website to see any updates. But again, we do typically require um, you to submit some sort of um, test score. We are a holistic review process. So we do not have any minimum test scores. We look at everything. So we're looking at these um, essays and recommendations and evaluations um, along with your test scores um, to really make a, a holistic decision um, on whether or not you should be admitted to Duke Quinchan. So you see here that we do have a couple different application rounds. So we do have early decision. Um, which is binding. Um, however, if you uh, don't receive enough financial aid, we will let you out of that commitment. Um, so do keep that in mind, but you should only apply early decision if we are your number one choice school. You should only apply to any school that you're considering for early decision if, if it's your top choice. Um, so that deadline is November 2nd and students will find out um, their early decision uh, decisions in mid-December. Um, regular decisions are due, regular decision applications are due on January 4th. Um, and both of these, you know, we close um, at 11.59 Eastern time. So 11.59 PM, so you have, you know, the whole day to complete it as well. Um, so again, regular decision, January 4th deadline. Um, and you'd find out mid-March if you were admitted for regular decision. If you have any questions about the application rounds or, you know, what, um, you know, which one you should apply to, I'm happy to talk with you about that. And I'm sure your um, college counselor at your high school is probably um, able to kind of coach you on that too. Alrighty, so thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. There's a few additional resources that I want to point out. Um, so our social media, of course, is, is a great um, resource to learn more, but I um, especially want to point out the um, YouTube channel. So if you go look um, up Duke Quinchon University on YouTube, you can find all sorts of videos that are geared specifically towards international students that are day in the life videos that our students have made. So you can really see um, what life is like um, on campus. 
Um, we also have um, some uh, virtual campus tours as well as virtual information sessions. This is pretty much the same thing as a virtual information session, but I encourage you to check out the virtual campus tour um, as well. So definitely um, either email me or check out our website for that. Um, basically, it's current uh, DKU students who are giving you kind of a, a, a virtual tour based on photos of their dorms that they've taken through campus and they can tell you um, a lot about their experience as a DKU student. So highly recommend you take advantage of that. Um, now, I don't see any questions in the Q&A. If you want to ask any, I encourage you to do so now. Um, but otherwise, like I said, that is my email address. It's emily.gruby at duke.edu. Um, and you can reach out to me with, again, any questions that come up. But I do encourage you to um, spend some time on our website and um, learn a bit more about DKU um, from the many resources that um, I've provided here. But I really appreciate you guys um, coming on tonight and viewing this presentation. And I hope you found it beneficial. Um, and, and I hope you learned a little bit about um, a Duke education in China. So thank you. Hello all, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I did wanna let you know that when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for any additional sessions at wvacrao.org. That's West Virginia Acro.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session recording as well as others. Um, and that website again is wvacrao.org. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a great evening.